okay, to f actually calculate the force on a charged particle moving inside a magnetic field, we can use this equation here. F equals B Q V, uh, where B is the magnetic flux density, Q is the charge, and V is the velocity of the particle. Uh, this actually comes from the equation F equals B I O. Instead of uh, I, we write Q over T, charge per unit time. And then we rearrange this. And you can see QL length divided by time is a measure of the velocity within the wire. Okay, and now obviously with this equation again, you, you might have to use a sine angle uh, if the charged particle is not moving perpendicular to the field. So if it's moving an angle to the field, you might have to use acute angle uh, for, the, for the theta. Okay, so in this question, what we have a proton enters a uniform magnetic field at a speed of 5 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. The magnetic flux density is 0 0.35 teslas. What is the radius of curvature? So obviously what is going to happen is we're going to start doing a circular motion like that. So what we're trying to find is the radius. Okay, so the equation we could use is firstly F equals BQV to find the magnetic force on the charged particle when it enters. So we can do the magnetic flux in 0 0.35 times uh, 1.6 times into the minus 19, which is the charge of a proton, times the velocity. And this will give us a force of 2.8 times into the minus 13 newtons. Now, because it's doing circular motion, we can make this equal to mv squared over r. So m is the mass of the proton, which you can find in your data sheets. Square by uh, v times v squared, uh, and then rearrange to find r. We've got the f already. We've got the magnetic force. That's the only force that's acting on the particle, so we can equate them. And this will give us a radius of 0 0.15 meters. But alternatively, what we can do is actually find an equation using these two, um, which will be more useful later on. So if you write BQV equals mv squared of r, because that's the only force acting on this particle, we can cancel out one of the v's from both sides, and we can make r the subject. So we get a momentum, which is mv over bq. It's a very useful equation. Okay, we've got an alpha particle and a beta particle that are entering the same magnetic field at the same velocity. But you can see the beta particle curves a lot more. So they're both doing circular motion. It's just the alpha particle's radius of curvature is much bigger than the radius of curvature for the beta particle. And we need to explain why. But we can use the equation that we just derived a minute ago. The radius of curvature in a magnetic field is mv over bq. Now because it's the same velocity and the same magnetic field, we can ignore those two. So now what we have is, a, what is an alpha particle? The alpha particle is a helium nucleus. So it's basically, uh, the mass is four times the mass of a nucleon. I'm just going to pretend the mass of a proton. And the charge here is plus 2e. Okay. And for the electron, which is a, a beta particle is an electron, well, the electron's mass compared to a, a, a proton, the relative mass is actually a lot less, is 1840th of a mass of a proton or any nucleon and this charge is minus e or just one e basically so if we look at the equation here at the top you can see for the beta particle for the alpha particle uh, it has if we look at the numbers it will be a total of 7360 times bigger mass so if we just divide um, this number by this number, it's much bigger. But the charge of the alpha particle is also times 2. So if we uh, work these out, because they're on, uh, we divide them, we get a total effect of 3,680. So the radius of the alpha particle is 3,680 times the radius of the beta particle.